in 2010, we, with support from the Sharjah Art Foundation, we made a 30-minute short called Traders, um, which uh, was commissioned for the Sharjah Biennial 2011 and went to the New York Film Festival. And, and so we had, what we retained from that was the character of Malika, um, who is, uh, who is the uh, working class girl, it's a very straight, good girl, um, who is also the lead singer of an all-girl punk rock band with, uh, with uh, political lyrics and a very strong vision of the world and her place in it. So we kept Malika going into the, the, the feature film, which we shot in, in, in 2011, 2012. Um, and then it evolved further. Uh, at the Cannes Film Festival 2011, I met, I saw this terrific Moroccan film called Sur la Planche, On the Edge, mm -hmm. and the lead actress in that, Sophia Asami, became our Amal. Uh, the, the second role in the film, who's a, who's a drug mule who's in too deep and starting to really burn out. Um, and Malika decides that she wants to give this girl a hand, uh, but it's very dangerous to do so. So she, she just takes a risk. I had heard a story which, was, which came back to me when I met Sophia. Um, Sophia is a, is, a, is, a, is a tough chick. She's a, she's a terrific actress. Um, and she's from Casablanca, um, and she's had a wild life um, and a lot of adventures. And I had heard a story about a young woman who um, had been working for these guys, making runs from Morocco to Europe, uh, delivering shipments, and wanted to quit and wasn't allowed to quit. And the story went, ended very badly. Um, and, and so, at a certain point, we realized that we wanted to do something with this story, and meeting Sophia Sami made it possible because she's um, somebody who has an authentic uh, knowledge of, of, of that part of the Moroccan reality. I moved to Tangier in 2005 for love. Um, my wife, Ito Barada, is a Moroccan artist um, who was coming back to her hometown of Tangier. Um, because uh, a movie theater was in danger. Right. The, 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 the 1940s uh, cinema riff of this beautiful Art Deco theater in the main square of Tangier was about to go out of business. And so Ito, being the crazy artist that she is, decided to start a nonprofit, spent two years fundraising, two years of construction work to create the Tangier Cinematheque, um, which was North Africa's first cinema cultural center. Uh, which has a great programming and workshops and invites filmmakers and um, uh, does community outreach and, uh, and gets all sorts of people to see an incredibly broad assortment of movies. And it also has an archive which spans um, films from the Arab world and documentary are among the specialties of their archive. So it's this great project and that was a very dynamic introduction to the city because um, I helped on the construction part of things mm -hmm. and, and, and so got to know that side of the city. And I, I think actually the by the time I felt ready to write something about Moroccans, which was not immediately, um, my experience of working with uh, auto mechanics and electricians, and one of my good friends in Morocco is an electrician, uh, made me feel like the Moroccan working class had something very exciting and dynamic and, and, um, and cinematographically interesting about it. Well, so 2010, when we make the short, is before this thing called the Arab Spring. Yeah. And in fact, we make a movie which is just science fiction. There's no <laughs> punk rock scene in Tangier. Tangier is completely asleep in 2010. And the kids who are hanging around in the cafe of the Cinematheque are listening to Ben Harper smoking lots of cigarettes and sort of holding hands under the table. Right. I was angry at them for not being angry at themselves. Mm. What's going on, you guys? You're in a society that's full of social injustice, and you've got every reason to be fired up punk rock teenagers, and you're not. Right. What's going on? You guys are all asleep. We finished the film, and on February 20th, 2011, uh, every, uh, everything breaks loose in Morocco. The Moroccan movement for social justice is called the February 20th movement. And so the night of our little cast and crew screening at the Cinematheque, the kids had to climb out their parents' windows and sneak out because uh, the parents would never let them go out. The streets were had full of burning cars. That morning there had been demonstrations of mothers marching to demand better prices from the French electricity monopoly. Um, it was this dynamic moment. And so the, we made the feature having had this complex, uh, impossible to simplify uh, experience of um, pan-Arab 
uh, uprisings for social justice and all sorts of complicated consequences that came with that. And so we had to try to digest that uh, a little bit. That's right, I was in Stockholm at the film festival in 98 or 99 um, with uh, Pi, which was Darren Aronofsky's first film. And so it was, that was a great first introduction to this wonderful Stockholm festival. And even then, Stockholm had a, um, a there was a particular feeling that the identity of the festival was full of this um, very free curiosity. So anyway, we love, love Stockholm. <laughs> uh, yeah, working as an actor, um, as a director, I see actors as resources, and I like very much to workshop scenes with actors. Um, I, f and I trust them to offer um, inspirations about character, about dialogue, about details, about research. So it's, it was very rich and rewarding for me to work with Shema and Sophia mm -hmm. uh, on, on creating the roles of Malika and Amal and unpacking these characters together with them. And then once we have a script, we have a script and we stick more or less to the text. Yeah. But what was, uh, how did you discover Malika? Was she also in the short or? We had a long casting process in the Cinematheque looking at lots of young women non-actors. And then one day the projectionist in the cinema said, there's a girl in my acting class and once you see this girl you won't need to see anybody else. And he was right. Uh, she was incredibly compelling in rehearsal, and I think she's an actor with uh, an unlimited future. Um, and really, she, you know, she's a friend as well, and, uh, and I'm really pushing her to work with strong directors and to take roles that challenge her and keep pushing her game because I think the sky is the limit for Shema Benasha and that she's going to be, a, uh, you know, making, making interesting films for a long time to come. And Sophia Sami also, Kayed Cinema had a, had a box about her sort of, you know, actors we'd like to see more of. And right. their article was sort of, she did, she rose out of nowhere and made this one film, Sur la Planche, and vanished. I said, hey, guys, <laughs> wait a minute, she's around. Yeah. So Sophia, we're going to be seeing lots more of. And then there's a number of established Moroccan actors in the film, Morad Zagendi, who is uh, kind of a star in Belgium in the comedy world, came down to do the role of Samir. Dressrouk, who you see in a lot of the American productions that come to Morocco, is a, a, an American, uh, a Moroccan actor who's well-known. Um, who plays Hajj, mm. Heavies, um, Nadia Niazi, who plays the mom, and so on. Yeah. Well, when we were doing, our, when we were doing our, our, our shoot, which was at a very small scale, um, we had no idea what we would do for post-production. Right. Uh, and in the event, um, we returned to New York. Uh, my family and I uh, spent that, that year in New York City, and so we had the pleasure of, of, of posting the film with all of these great New York people. Sabine Hoffman, who's a wonderful editor, helped to figure out the movie. Nathan Larson, who has deep Sweden connections, because he's married to Nina Persson, and they have a house here, and he makes music all over the world, including in Sweden. Right. Um, gave us this terrific score. Um, Jacob Ribikoff did the sound design. So yeah, uh, best of both worlds. Right. I would love to continue making movies in Morocco and posting in New York. We are um, polishing the script and looking for European co-production partners. Mm. Um, to join what will be uh, Morocco, U.S., um, European co-production of this dark, sexy thriller with a political subtext, um, which is yeah very different in style from Traders, um, much more controlled filmmaking. Um, we're really looking for a, a beautiful, a beautiful image in a way that uh, Traders was more about pure reality. Um, and, uh, and it's a thriller which has roots going back to, um, to Hitchcock and um, Kubrick. Uh, you know, we want to have debts to, debts to the thriller tradition, which we consider a great one. Um, but also make a movie that's still grounded in the realities of, of, of Morocco today. Uh, and Tangier, which is an extraordinary city um, with, with stories everywhere. Yeah.